All right, so here we are. Um, there's an Evanti vulnerability. Evanti is a VPN appliance used by a lot of large companies, and I don't think I've seen this in years. The CISA, the government agency, has required everybody to disconnect their Evanti appliances by last Saturday. So I don't know. I guess that means most of the remote workers are not going to be able to use remote work. Um, so there's a whole series of vulnerabilities, and they keep finding more. And there are instructions here to clean your machine by disconnecting it, restoring it to factory defaults, then reinstalling the uh, settings. But uh, since they keep finding more vulnerabilities, even that might not be good enough. So uh, anyway, uh, it's interesting that they're taking it so seriously. And I was on Paul's security podcast, and I was saying, he was saying it's very hard to tell which vulnerabilities are important. And I think the government is helping. CISA has been doing very well for the last couple of years. I think under the new director, Jen Easterly, they've really been jumping into important security issues and giving intelligent advice. So uh, it's not a common thing, but right now the U.S. government is helping people make intelligent security decisions. So I appreciate that as far as it goes. All right. Uh, so this is also very uncommon. The App Store has a fake LastPass password manager that looks like the real thing but tempts you to send your credentials to some fake version of LastPass. So uh, the Apple Store is famously clean, much cleaner than the Google Store, but this has apparently slipped past uh, by just spelling LastPass wrong. Apparently got away with it for a while. Uh, now, one thing, the thing that usually prevents this is that you cannot send an app to the App Store without proving who you really are and paying a fee. And then after you do something bad, they ban you forever and you can never sell any more apps. So that punishment is usually enough to stop people from putting up bad apps. But not this time, apparently. So let's see if I can dig through the ads. Holy cow. Yeah, this is what uh, Cory Doctorow calls the enchantification of the internet. Everything is just buried under ads and garbage these days. Anyway, um, this is a blast from the past. SQL injection used to be the number one most important security vulnerability on the web. It used to be that more than 90% of all stolen data came from SQL injection until about five years ago, Amazon, Amazon's cloud service got very popular and by default, everything stored in cloud databases is open to the whole world with no authentication. And so unprotected Amazon EC2 buckets became the number one way to lose data. But a bunch of people are still able to steal data with SQL injection. These guys managed to steal uh, millions of records from 65 websites by just using automated SQL injection tools. So uh, that vulnerability is still out there too. All right. And so this one will be kind of fun. Um, if you open a Windows command prompt and you have to execute an administrative command, you have to go open an administrative command prompt. This is one of the most common problems students have in my classes. They don't understand that there are two different kinds of command prompts and when you have to use them. And uh, in Linux, you don't have to do that because you type sudo. Now, Microsoft has always had run as. And you could run as administrator, which amounted to the same thing. But for some reason, they're not porting in sudo. So anyway, it'll be another option to elevate yourself from a non-administrator command prompt to an administrator level on Windows. So that'll be more convenient for us Linux users. Um, hello? Anyway, so this one was pretty fun. The um, Iranians have been hacking into streaming services and putting up AI-generated news. Um, so they made this an AI-generated speaker uh, putting up uh, news about Palestinians injured and such, and they hacked into United Arab Emirates to broadcast a deep fake news reader. Um, I don't know why they targeted that particular region, but anyway, it's interesting to see, and this is what everyone's been predicting for the last several years, is that we are going to have a flood of AI-generated deep fakes that, um, of political content that will be swaying the election. And there already was, uh, a few weeks ago, a fake a video of Biden telling people not to vote in the primary that went out and that originated from some group in Texas and uh, there will probably be a lot more of these. So uh, 23andMe is the company that will index your DNA and put it online and let you find your genetic relatives and other things and they got hacked and lost most of their data because they were extremely sloppy in the organization of their website and the security requirements. 
And I didn't realize until a few days ago, this hurt the company incredibly badly. Their stock fell by 98%, and for the last year, their stock has been trading under a dollar, which should mean they will have to be delisted from the major stock exchanges. That makes them a penny stock. Penny stocks are not listed on normal stock exchanges. They're on a special alternative one because everybody knows they're worthless. But um, they now explain what happened. They, um, the thing that makes money is this selling individuals their DNA profile followed by a highly questionable medical analysis based on your DNA, which experts say is not much better than just using Ouija boards or tarot cards or something. Um, but they do it, and people pay for that. And, um, but what they really want to do, they say, is develop new drugs based on their large database of DNA information. Now, I do not understand how having a bunch of DNA information means you can develop a new drug. That doesn't seem connected at all to me, but they seem to think that they can do that. And they, but if you're going to develop a new drug, you have to spend years and millions of dollars developing it and getting it approved. So they claim their temporary running in the red is necessary while they develop that new business. So we'll see. It sounds like double talk and garbage to me. I think this company will just be gone pretty soon, but we'll find out. And good riddance. It's a terrible idea. If you ever attempt to have your DNA tested and posted online, don't do it. It will harm you and all your family and your future generations. All you to compromise their privacy in a way you can't take it back. Um, don't do it at all. Anyway, um, this is a surprise. Viagra keeps Alzheimer's at bay. Now, Viagra sells primarily to deal with erectile dysfunction, but it, in fact, adjusts the way blood flows in your body and is, is, uh, diagnosed and is uh, prescribed for other medical conditions to cause where the blood is flowing improperly, and apparently it has a significant, substantial effect on the, the chance of developing Alzheimer's. So that is surprising. Hopefully it'll hold up. Um, there was a very interesting talk I saw at ShmooCon. ShmooCon talks were just posted. And this talk here um, about how he attacked, a, duplicated an API, he used this product I'd never seen before called Packet Sender. Yeah, they're awful noisy out there, aren't they? Anyway, the, um, uh, so this, this product is a lot like Burp. It will stand in the middle and capture network traffic, but it will record it and then let you resend it. So he was able to completely duplicate an online service with this thing. Is he shutting the door? Maybe just leave it. Anyway, I'm going to snuff news. I'm going to stop with the news.